I lived in different parts of the world. As I said, I was born in South Korea and grew up in the U.S. and also lived in Kenya, Africa for about 16 years as a missionary. Currently, I am serving here in the Philippines. Uh, I call myself uh, a Virginian. Uh, Fairfax, Virginia is my home. I teach at a number of different places and I am an author of about several or four or five different mission-related books. I'll be drawing much from my, uh, one of my books, Disciples of Nathan, for this session. So if you are interested in my book, perhaps you can get it later on. Well, during my 26 years of missionary service in Africa and Asia at large, God has given me opportunities to fellowship with other missionaries and cross-cultural workers who had apparent successes in their missionary works and disciple-making efforts. Several common traits that made them excel in their works were soon discovered. One of the most vivid characteristics discovered was that every one of them bore the marks of incarnational lifestyle. Every fruit-bearing missionary had to go through extra miles to be localized while imitating Christ's lifestyle in perseverance. Going cross-cultural should take place in three holistic dimensions, as you can see on the screen, which is coming from 1 Thess Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. First one is spirit, which is spiritual aspect of Mission Day. Uh, this integral area can be ministered through incarnational lifestyle and gospel-centered work of a missionary. Uh, certainly, a missionary must pursue modeling his life after Christ, and consequently, both the missionary and local disciples would become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And second dimension is the soul, or rather, educational aspect of the missionary day. This critical need can be met through teaching and educational ministry. Just as the Puritans established the schools alongside churches so that everyone would be able to read God's word, a missionary should not neglect meeting the needs of the human soul and encouraging people to love God with their soul as well. And the third dimension would be body or physical aspects of the mission day. Orthopraxis through care, medical and mercy ministries must be demonstrated on the field. Orthopraxis adds legs and feet to our biblical worldview. The biblical worldview resonates with what and orthopraxis with how. The public ministry of our Lord Jesus was eventually equally distributed for preaching, teaching, and healing the people. This area completes the holistic approaches of the mission day. Nevertheless, it came to my attention that most difficult area for missionaries to leave the incarnational lifestyle, especially those originating from North America and Europe, was, ab was adapting themselves to the local economy and standard of living of the majority world where their mission fields were often, often found. If a missionary is assigned to a ministry setting where the economy median of the local people he works with is close or higher than that of the home country, it should not be much problem. Usually, it takes less effort to upgrade one's economy level than downgrade, provided adequate financial support. It is quite a challenging issue, for, for example, for an average middle-class American family of four that used to live on, say, 90,000 to 100,000 yearly budget to suddenly adapt to Kenya's urban middle class standard of living of $4,000 to $5,000 a year. A missionary's adaptability to the local economy and standard of living is a great challenge not only, not only for the missionary himself but also for his family members. It may create devastation to the missionary family who will likely face a downgrade of the standard of living rather than an upgrade. A single missionary may find it less burdensome, yet likewise challenging for such a degree of economical downgrade. Missionaries usually end up choosing either one of two options that lie before them. Either they choose to live in a little America environment or make a burdensome effort to, toward localization in this area. Though challenging, it is an avoidable area where 
All the effective missionaries had strived to make efforts because this ultimately leads them to experience bonding. The first and foremost step toward the incarnational lifestyle, as clearly shown in the example of the best cross-cultural worker, our Lord Jesus Christ, who came to live as one of the Jews. So how far should a cross-cultural witness go with this contextual penetration? In this regard, I would like to suggest a cultural homogenization, a doorstep of effective disciple making effort in cross-cultural context is incarnation through the bonding procedure. Bonding opens the ultimate pathway to cross-cultural discipleship. Therefore, missionaries should experience bonding in their effort to adapt to the local lifestyle as a means to exercise incarnation lifestyle. One of the most widespread underlying world views that hinders incarnational bonding effort may be neocolonialism. That is, us the Westerners, who used to be lording it over other nations in the past, may subconsciously consider foreign nationals of the majority world as somewhat inferior even in the spiritual dimension, and then treat them from a paternalistic view such unbiblical modes of missionary life and work cripple the current mission, missions enterprise. In the name of efficient mobility, missionaries might drive a four-wheel drive jeep, which the local counterparts he works with will probably never have a chance to drive in his lifetime. For a protective environment, some missionaries may stay and eat at a hotel while visiting local churches and their indigenous co-workers instead of sharing their food, local foods and lodgings to promote Christian brotherhood. Some missionaries leave their mission fields after years of tenure with soul and moil without succeeding local disciples who will carry on their works. The local leaders may have never felt that the missionary uh, was actually one of them. And perhaps the feeling could have been mutual even for the missionaries. Where there was no bonding formed in relationship, trust and friendship were hardly created. Thus, discipleship may have not taken place in a deep level. No matter what funding, building or project missionary may have left behind upon their departure from the field, an instruction of the Great Commission is very clear. Go and make disciples. Should there be no reproduction of the local disciples, the missionary work may have not been completed as David Hassergrave challenges. Love of our brothers will motivate our voluntary and willful cross-cultural identification, causing spiritual, educational, and physical homogeneity. Human history is filled with the stories of brothers assaulters rather than brothers keepers. Just as God has reminded Cain after him killing Abel that he was called to be his brother's keepers, brothers and sisters in Christ today are especially obliged to keep one another, transcending cultures and borders. Christian brothers can and should live in harmony and experience homogeneity. It serves as a pathway to effective cross-cultural discipleship. Honest and open communications paves its first doorstep. Cross-cultural workers can find and connect a link to the introduction of the gospel and spiritual fellowship with any ethnic groups on earth by understanding and applying this principle. Jesus still reminds the missionaries today in Matthew 10, 11 through 16, whatever town or village you enter, search there for some worthy people and stay at their house until you leave. This concept was enabled by Jesus' belief that all people are brothers and sisters who originated from one family tree. It is, it is natural for a brother to stay in his own brother's place when visiting him. Jesus' words still resonate down the centuries for those who are going for missions. It is therefore advised for missionaries to stay in a local church leader's house or something that they provide for the lodging unless one is ailing with health issue or 
the host declines to do so for any reason, say maybe because of a security reason, for example. Let me just uh, um, suggest the three principles in this regard. There is first the kenosis principle, which is found in the Bible and other researches that I've conducted years ago. First of all, the kenosis principle affirms this position. A missionary's incarnation of self-limitation is a great trait that resembles Christ's kenosis, which is translated as made nothing in our English Bibles, points to a voluntary act of self-abasement or self-limitation. This kenosis principle suggests that the modest lifestyle of a missionary family on the field should a missionary aspire to grow in a cross-cultural dynamics, a constitutional transformation of his cultural DNA needs to take place to a certain extent. Having believed the inerrancy of the scripture as an evangelical Christian, the world must have sprung out of the homogeneity found in Noah's family after the flood. It even stretches to the pre-flood era and reaches up all the way to Adam and eventually to God in Luke chapter 3 verse 38. Once a missionary begins to see that we all came from one giant family tree and that those foreign disciples are his long lost relatives, it be we become closer to the cultural homogeneity that existed at the very inception of the history. Among many examples, the book Mission Legacies speaks about Bruno Gutmann, a missionary to Moshi people of East Africa. Perhaps Frank may know him, he's a German by nationality, uh, who humbly exercised great self-limitation and earned the local people's heart for the gospel. Bruno Gutmann was a dedicated missionary Following the example of Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 9.20, he wanted to become a Mtsaka in Swahili, uh, accepted member of a Chaga tribe. And he was able to achieve it in a very short lifespan because he dedicated himself so completely to the people of Moshi tribe in Africa. In this self-limitation, he did not even uh, actually speak Swahili well, according to the, the documentations we have, but he, uh, he achieved a great penetration because of his intensive involvement in a single tribe in East Africa, and he was able to understand and love them as no other Europeans did in his time of colonial period. The Kenosis principle affirms that missionaries should experience bonding in their effort to to adapt to the local lifestyle as a mean to exercise the incarnational ministry style. To create crucial incarnational bonding, a missionary should make efforts to adjust his standard of living to that of locals he wishes to reach. For this purpose, in some mission organizations, they, they, they ask their newcomer missionaries to be willing to live with a local family for half a year and limit their personal belongings to less than 44 pounds, which is about 20 kilograms, and use only local public transportation and expect to carry out language learning in the context of relationship that the learner is responsible to develop and maintain. When all is said and done, it is an undeniable fact that the greatest single focal point of tension today between the sending agency and the receiving church is related to the money issues as Herbert Cain affirms. Therefore missionaries can model for indigenous staff a modest lifestyle that reflects godly financial stewardship. It is a general rule that missionaries should live at the level of the people that they want to reach. My research attempted to serve as a contemporary paradigm of cross-cultural Christian work. Paul became Gentile, Jew, barbarian, and everything to reach them, as stated in 1 Corinthians 9, 20 through 22. He refers to the principle of cross-cultural homogenization. Genuine homogenization takes place at the foot of the cross. Christ willingly carried the cross for our sins and reached out to us with his sacrificial love. And that will motivate us to, to voluntarily cross over our culture, their cultures and economic standards to reach the lost. 
the adjustment principle affirms that missionaries should experience the bonding in their effort to adapt to the local economy as a means to exercise incarnation on life. The third principle I would like to suggest is the, uh, the heart principle. The third reason to believe that missionaries should experience bonding in their effort to adapt to the local lifestyle as a means to exercise incarnation or ministry is related to the heart principle. Um, it is important for the nationals to whom the missionary works with to notice the heartfelt effort of the missionary to identify himself with them in all areas, including financial areas. Herbert Cain's perspective on identification with local economy standards suggests a realistic way forward with the gap between the missionary and the national workers he is working with. The gap is usually so great. So a missionary must make a sincere attempt to reasonably downgrade his living standard to show his willingness to identify with the people he came to serve. The gesture may be more penetrative uh, in the countries where the anti neocolonialism and anti-Western sentiment and anti-Christian mindset are latent in people's way of thinking. Contextualization begins with humility. A downgrade also needs and begins with humility. Uh, but I want to make sure that the bonding and going native are not the same thing according to Thomas and Elizabeth Brewster. The goal is to become incarnational, which is the model of our Lord Jesus coming to live among us. Obviously, no human missionary can achieve the level of incarnation the Son of God demonstrated by being born as a man. And the last point I want to make sure is, missionary needs to also think about reaching out to his family members. Our family is the smallest building block of God's kingdom. and. Uh, uh, we have a lot of missionary statistics that their children are not following the footsteps of the Lord and joining the crowd of nuns, N-O-N-E-S, those who are not interested in the religions and faith. Uh, let me just conclude by saying this. Some of you may be saying that uh, why do we need to suffer unnecessarily for all these costs and downgrades uh, that are not comfortable for us to reach as missionaries? is simply because we are redeemed of the Lord and we're responsible people of the people that the Lord has given to us. And that includes the people outside our family as well as those who are inside our family, especially including our children, to make sure they follow the footsteps of the Lord after we serve the Lord in the mission field. So thank you very much for listening.